stuck down to the capsule and place her inside. She was groomed for her watch. We attached the instruments, bid her farewell, and turned away from the launch pad. NBC News presents a special report on the Russian launching of a second Earth satellite. And now to guide this report here in New York is NBC News commentator Merrill Muller. Good afternoon. A dog knocked a goat right out of the world's attention today. In a masterpiece of propaganda timing, the Soviet Union announced it had launched Sputnik No. 2, carrying a live dog. This is reportedly history's first space traveler. <laughs> Moscow reports this morning that the dog in the new Sputnik is in satisfactory condition, and the Reds hint that she may be parachuted safely back to Earth. Space dog alive well. The Red Sputnik. The dog barking his way around the Earth every 102 minutes has won Russia new respect. A British editor asked me half-jokingly, how does it feel to be the citizen of a second-rate power? Behind the scientific success lies a grim military warning. Confirmed now by Anglo-American scientists, the rocket that launched Sputnik No. 2 is capable of carrying a ton and a half hydrogen bomb warhead more than 5,000 miles to a target. The kind of thing that a month ago would have sounded like a joke, but in Washington now, anyone who cares to laugh at this does so at his own risk. The Russians are talking about shooting up something that will hit the moon and possibly even make some kind of mark on it, visible from the Earth. These Russians, who we had stereotyped as a crude people, barely able to master a tractor, were years ahead of us. When that shaggy dog gets back from outer space, can we all go out and have another race? Will he still free the coon, or just howl at the moon? In spite of these fears, Laika captured the limelight. Everyone wanted the first living creature in space to return safely to Earth. Laika became more famous than any actor or athlete of her time. Oh, they'll pin a red, red ribbon in his hair For being the only dog that's been up there He'll be the talk in every town When that Sputnik comes back down For he has been the highest in the air Change to Leica, Leica cigarettes Made of the best eastern tobaccos Known far and wide for their fine flavor Gentlemen, it appears that the whole world's concerned about little Mutnik flying around out there in space. Dr. Speck, what can you tell us about her chances for survival? Well, I uh, believe her chances for survival are probably quite good. The Russians have not said so officially, but they have indicated strongly an effort will be made to bring the dog back to Earth alive. Prayers were said for the dog, and people were asked to observe a minute's silence each day with special thoughts for her early and safe return to Earth. From Singapore to Cincinnati, they've risen in a chorus of protests. Marches on Soviet embassies and various capitals are planned, and the National Canine Defense League of Britain has called dog lovers to a minute of silence each day. But then it dawned on the world that there was no provision for Laika's return, and that she was sent into orbit to die. The Soviets admitted that she would soon run out of oxygen. Millions reacted not to the missile threat, but to Laika's impending doom. Keep your chin up, little dog. You deserve a monument, you pioneer in space. We can only pray in this time of aloneness 
and suffering that God will be merciful and, and speed the end. This voiceless cry of mercy as this satellite spans the earth should be long remembered as a symbol of the torture the animal world must go through. Months later, the spacecraft carrying the lifeless body of its valiant little pioneer fell out of orbit and was incinerated during re-entry. The Russian people did build a monument in her honor. 